You're listening to TC Talks on TNT. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's TC here, back with another episode of TC Talks. And today, we're going to be highlighting week two, recapping some of the major games that happened and giving you my overall record. So let's go ahead and dive right on into it. But first, let me know what your favorite game from week two was down in the comment section below. Overall, I was 9-7 in this week, too. Uh, A pretty terrible showing for some of my teams. The biggest loser being the Bears. Now, obviously, a little bit of a sore spot for me because I told you guys you would look foolish for not believing in the Bears going into week two, but now it is me who looks foolish for sipping the Kool-Aid, believing in Justin Fields and that Chicago Bears offense. Now, at first, it looked like it could have been a good game. It looked like the Bears had something going, something to prove early on, but then immediately, just as you got your hopes up, the offense faltered. And I think the biggest deal with that was the fact that Justin Fields became the focal point of the offense. Now, the Bears are notorious for running on first down, but when you have a young quarterback like that, you can't just throw the ball on first down all the time. And over those next few drives, they had four-ish straight three and outs, and not including the uh, two-play drive that happened right before halftime, but four straight punts, three and outs, and the Bears were relying more on Justin Fields to execute. And that means those add up to about Justin Fields making a few misses there and not really getting the ball towards the end of the game because instead of trying to throw the ball downfield to get back into the game, what did Chicago do? They were running the ball, and it was being done successfully. Unfortunately, it was too late to go back to the ground game in the fourth quarter, but you saw that Chicago had the opportunity. Had the offense and the play calling been there, I think it would have been a much better game. But the biggest thing for Chicago was the fact the run defense was just not there. Say what you want about the offense. The Bears were not going to win if the defense was allowing Green Bay to get yards on the ground. They did. It allowed it to be a much easier game for the passing situation. And because of that, that diminished receiving core had the windows they needed to to be able to execute. Say what you will about Aaron Rodgers and this core. If they're able to run the ball successfully like they did against the Bears, it's going to be a long season for other teams. Just because Aaron Rodgers, if you give him that space, that's all he needs. Especially if his receivers are able to actually catch balls. That sums up the Green Bay Packers game in a nutshell. Also, uh, Fields was in. I don't see how replay officials missed that. Not that it would have been the difference. Not that the Bears would have been a good team if that touchdown would have happened. But it would have been a little bit of a swing. It would have been a more respectable showing. It would have been like 17 to 24, maybe 18, maybe 16 if they failed a two-point conversion attempt. But in either case, it is a much better game than a 27 to 10 blowout. That is pathetic. But let's get into some of these other games because we're already about four minutes in here and we haven't even touched base on the rest of the NFL. So Kansas City, I predicted them to win, but it was not as good of a game as I was expecting, especially from Patrick Mahomes' perspective. Yes, he eventually came through and got Kansas City the win, but at the same time, after a dominant performance From Josh Allen the week previous, you were expecting Patrick Mahomes to kind of try to match that tempo. Similar to the uh, playoff game that they played last year in the divisional round, you would hope that that energy would translate week in and week out, and it just did not translate for Patrick Mahomes in this contest. But it did for Josh Allen against the Tennessee Titans, who were the AFC's First place seed in the playoffs last year. He went out there and he absolutely decimated this team. Not just him. Let's give his receivers. Let's give his defense. Let's give his O-line the credit they deserve. Because the defense was phenomenal. Absolutely suffocating all game. That was some stellar defense from the Buffalo Bills. They look ready to win 
right now. I just I fear every team that goes up against those guys because they are just absolutely blood hungry. Josh Allen is the only thing keeping my cousin in our fantasy league. And honestly, does he need anything else? Josh Allen is an absolute mic drop week in and week out, and it's going to be a hard thing to overcome for any team going up against him. Then the Browns went up against the Jets, and of course they browned it up all over the field. Joe Flacco able to go in there looking like a god and just tear up that Browns uh, defense, especially thanks to Nick Chubb, who you know just couldn't fall down and decided to get the touchdown and said, fantasy players are excited about that, but Browns fans are absolutely devastated. Then you had Baltimore and Miami, and this wasn't an offensive showdown. Nobody was expecting. Now, Tua did look good in week one, but nobody, nobody, don't even try to say you were expecting a six touchdown performance by Tua in that matchup. It was ridiculous. The fact that they were able to just roll right over the Baltimore Ravens was superb. Oh my God. I don't want to say that Tua's made it, but that game could be the beginning of him making it to where everybody said he would. All that hype, all those years, Finally paid off, and you saw that with Josh Allen, too. Josh Allen came into the league, not a very big threat. Two years go by, and all of a sudden, Josh Allen is a top 10, top 5 quarterback. This year, he's making the argument to be the top quarterback in the NFL, especially if he's able to get that Super Bowl title this year. It is going to be hard to question that. So, Tua, in a similar circumstance right now, starting to premiere. Is it going to continue, though? I hope it does. He absolutely ran all over the Baltimore Ravens defense in Week 2. So, shout out to Tua. Hope you're able to keep it going. Then Washington and Carson Wentz went on to play the Detroit Lions. And Carson Wentz was supposed to be the guy that I underestimated. And he was supposed to overachieve. And unfortunately, he did the complete opposite. I also predicted that as well. Now that I was going to pick him to win, he's not going to. But unfortunately, I don't give myself credit for going both ways. My original prediction was that he was going to get me over the hump. He did not. So I have to suffer knowing that this was going to happen. I have to sit here knowing that I told myself he wasn't going to do it. But either way, I went with him to do it. The Lions made an absolute joke of me and Carson Wentz, but I will say I did pick up Carson Wentz in fantasy because I'm over here rolling with Kyler Murray. I had Justin Fields just for week one, though. I wanted him for week one, and he got me that win. I got the win week one with Fields. Fields got the win. It was it was a great time to be TC, but then I also have Matthew Stafford, who who is the stat patter, okay? He is Matthew Stad Patter, okay? And he's out there padding the wrong stats. He's out there padding the interceptions. No, sir. No, I need 300-plus yards. I need three-plus touchdowns from you. I don't need two, three interceptions. I don't need under 200 yards passing. Get out there and get me them fantasy points. And while you're at it, start throwing to Allen Robinson because I could put him as my flex. Okay? Okay. Now that we got that out of the way, let's continue on to Seattle and San Francisco. This was an unfortunate game, but it was the only way, the only way. I said it before, and it is just my opinion, but it is the only way, in my opinion, that Trey Lance was going to be able to stick around here in San Francisco for another season, was getting hurt, and now that has come true. I am sorry I did not knock on wood when I said it. So, I take credit for when bad things happen to the Bears. I don't want to take the credit for this, but I will say I apologize for saying that the week previous and have that happen the next week. I I am so sorry. It is a serious issue, and I hope he has a speedy 
100% recovery. Hope he's able to rebound because honestly, maybe some time getting back into the swing of things, being able to come back and look look at things a little bit differently, will be able to get him a a fresh uh, look at the game overall. Maybe impress a little bit when he does come back because overall. Not looking good, even from the limited action he did see against Seattle. Then you had Denver versus Houston, and wow, Broncos country. I hope it rides a lot better than that. This is riding like a Pontiac, and you were promised a Tesla. It is not looking good right now, and honestly, I hope it gets better. Because wow, these Broncos, they are making it hard to love, especially Russell Wilson. Now, I do I don't want to say that I'm right. I really don't. I don't want to sit here and say that Russell Wilson is a bad quarterback because there's no reason for him to be. But at the same time, I said during this trade, said it about Matty Ice, said it about Russell Wilson. These guys were premier guys five, six, seven years ago, but now Not as much. Are they good quarterbacks? Absolutely. They are good quarterbacks. But are they going to be the difference makers? Are they going to decide things for their team? Yes. Only in the negative way, though. They are not going to be the answer in a positive light. Joe Flacco doing what he's doing is amazing. Out of nowhere, unexpected. What Matty Ice is doing, what Russell Wilson's doing, I completely expected because they're just not there in their careers. They're past their point and they're fading out. So when you see a 17 to 16 victory or whatever the heck the final score for uh, Denver and Houston was, that's what you, you get. I'm not surprised at all. Some people are. Some people are like, Russell Wilson, when are you... When are you going to get going? When are you going to start cooking? And honestly, I don't think he is. Is he going to do better than this? Sure, I think anybody can do better than what's going on right now. But at the same time, are we saying it's a much higher ceiling than where they're at right now? Absolutely not. And to wrap it up, I just got to say this. I think that the Eagles got a good win against the Minnesota Vikings. It was a solid performance Thank you for not letting Justin Jefferson just catch every single pass. The fact that he did not get 198 yards or some ridiculous number like that is exactly how I won fantasy. Stefan Diggs, thank you for doing what you did. I got like 40 points from you in fantasy and you, you got me that win. Thank you so much. It was literally less than two points, and it all came down to your glorious, glorious ability to catch balls and not just catch them for big yards, but also catch them for touchdowns as well. Those three touchdowns really helped me out. But uh, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you guys thought the best game was from week two. Again, I went 9-7 and seven on this week. We're going to be bringing you our week two predictions later tonight, actually, because it is Thursday and it's already here for the next week. So I want to remind you, I'm picking Cleveland to beat Pittsburgh just in case this video did not make it out before that game starts. You can go ahead and check out my previous week's video, my predictions video, I commented underneath that I predict Cleveland to win as well, just in case you thought I was lying or I waited until after the game. But until next time, this has been TC with TC Talks. Peace.